Hello everyone, welcome to episode 37 of the chess.com rapid rating climb series. For those of you new to the channel, my name is Alex, we essentially play rapid games and I talk you through my thought process while we play with the intention of trying to educate you on some of the opening ideas, obviously middle game and end game ideas if and when we get to those. And then in the post game analysis using the computer and the fact that I can play the moves out on the board to better explain some of the more complicated ideas to you. Really quickly, for those of you already subscribed, thank you so much for the recent support. It has been insane. And while that continues, which it seems to be doing, I'm going to keep on thanking you because it really genuinely means a lot. Um, we have lost the past few games. Uh, those can be watched in the playlist below. And while they were disappointing, there was still a lot to be learned from them, arguably more to be learned than the ones that I win in, which has meant that we are now, you know, a bit further away from the goal of 2000 ELO. But this channel is primarily for education purposes rather than entertainment. I mean, obviously you may find it entertaining as well, and I hope you do, but it is more so education based. So. I'm getting into a lot of trouble towards the end of games because I'm low on time, which is frustrating, but I've addressed this in a few comments. My goal is to educate you guys, so if that means that I take way longer than necessary in the opening and the middle game explaining opening ideas or positional control or something, I'd rather do that and end up losing later on because of time issues than win and not educate properly. That's just the way I see it. If that's not something that you want, fair enough, fair enough. But I feel like the majority of you guys do want that based on the feedback I've been getting. Anyway, introduction out of the way. Let's search for a game and let's get this episode going. See if we can start the redemption arc. We are still close to 2000. We're against a 1730 rated opponent from the States. So hopefully we can show him why we're rated higher than him. I'm going to gain 4 elo if we win, but 4 elo is 4 elo, I suppose. Going to take everything we can. And he aborts the game. So, <laughs> I'm just going to leave this in, because you know I can't be editing videos. This is raw footage. Another low-rated opponent-ish. I mean, relatively low to what we are, from Poland. And is he going to play? Yes, he's going to play the English. And this is the first time we've seen the English in the Rating Climb series. I used to play Knight F6 exclusively, but we're going to go C6 and get into kind of a Slav, kind of a Karo sort of system. And he takes, which is interesting. This could turn into a bit of an exchange Slav after D4 where the C pawns get traded, and to be honest, there's not massive advantage for white. It's very, very equal. He doesn't expand in the center just yet. We're going to play knight C6. Could we have played knight F6? Absolutely. But I guess playing knight C6 means that if he goes E4, we could push D4. Whether that's good or not, it probably is probably is because we can kick a knight out from d5 with e6 and then push e5 to secure a bit of a wedge in the center and argue that this d-pawn is misplaced. So yeah, he does push d4. And this is just a classic exchange Slav. You kind of should go knight f6. I know it's completely symmetrical in terms of the development, but with the black pieces, like you can't really complain about symmetry. Now what we are going to do though, is if our opponent develops a bishop to f4, I don't think I'm going to mirror him. I think I'm going to go for moves like a6 and e6. And yeah, I'm going to trap my bishop in for now. But we could expand with moves like b5, bishop b7, rook c8 in the future. I think this is a threat. I mean... If we were to develop the bishop and then the knight came to b5, we probably could just go rook to c8. But I don't really want to just play symmetrically. I also don't like getting the bishop off of the defense of b7 because then moves like queen b3 can be annoying. 
Bishop g4 may be a tempting move to some of you, but knight e5 is very frustrating to deal with because it comes with an attack on the bishop. And because the e-pawn hasn't moved, the knight is not pinned to the queen, obviously. You could consider the move queen to a5 to pin this knight, which wouldn't be a terrible move. But when white castles, this kind of move is going to be back on when this pin is relieved, or queen d2 relieving the pin. So I might just go a6. Yeah, this can't be a bad move. It might not be objectively the best, which bishop f5 is probably the objective best move. Maybe queen b6 is good looking at b2 because his bishop has abandoned the defense of it. But I feel like playing in a bit of a solid way right now. The thing is, I know that I'm higher rated than my opponent. And the general advice that I tend to give for people playing against a higher rated player is to be aggressive and tactical and try and get your opponent into a bit of a skirmish. And so I don't want my opponent to be able to do that to me. Um, I want to play a sort of drawn out positional game uh, to try and beat him in the long run, which is what I tend to do if I'm playing against a lower rated player, especially in over the board chess. So like I said, bishop f5 is a perfectly good move, but I am also aware that I don't fully know the theory here. So it might be safer to go e6, maybe bishop d6, maybe just bishop e7. e6 obviously secures the d5 pawn. Yes, I know I'm blocking in my bishop, but that's not the end of the world. My knights are good, this bishop's going to develop, I'm going to castle quickly can potentially bring this rook to c8, maybe expand with b5, and then bring my knight out to a5, trying to take advantage of the weakened light squares in the white position. Because a3 defends b4, but it also relieves defense of b3. And white also needs to put a pawn on b3 if he wants to occupy the c4 square well. Now, if this pawn was back... I don't know if you guys just heard that notification... Sorry if I just killed your sound. If not, then ignore me. If this pawn was back on a2, then it would support a b3 push to control my knight's movement if it comes out to a5. That doesn't quite work now. Okay. Okay, g3 is odd. I mean, I understand his idea. This bishop looks like it could be attacked with a move like knight to h5 in the future. Which, by the way, check out the previous episode of the rating climb. We have a similar sort of scenario, but against me in that episode. Very important idea to know. The thing is, if we go knight h5, he could play bishop to g5. He can also retreat. So bishop e7 is a tempting move. So that if we do play knight h5, bishop g5 can't be played because our bishop alongside our queen now controls that square. Knight e4 is always on the cards as well, because if takes takes, this knight gets booted say to e5, and then d4 hangs, because we'll have a queen and a knight attacking it. So that's also something to consider, but I think it is unnecessary, because white doesn't have to really respond. This move is also tempting. Applying pressure, applying pressure. And because knight to b5 is no longer an idea, I would expect probably b4 if we do that. a5, b5, I don't really like. So let's just calculate quickly. Queen b6, pawn b4. Then he's preparing knight ideas like knight a4, knight c5 with a tempo on my queen. So I don't think that's a good thing. Bishop d6 is on the radar. And if we exchange, it's good. But more than likely, white would shove a knight on e5, and we can't take with the knight, because after pawn takes, we get forked. Classic London idea. So I don't really want to do that, because if the knight lands on e5, I want to take it. So I'm just going to play bishop to e7. There is a game on my channel where I analyzed an over-the-board game I played in the Slav, where I won very quickly, and we had this a similar sort of idea with jostling for e5, where I put my bishop on e7 rather than d6, because I expected my opponent was going to play knight to e5. And he did, and he took back with the pawn after I took. 
and his position got very bad very quickly as a result of it because my bishop was on e7 and therefore not forkable like it would be on d6. Just worth noting. So I feel like castling is a very easy move to play. He castles. Again, knight e4 is a move, but just knight d2 probably deals with that very, very well. Could argue you could play f5, but even f3, knight gets booted back. Uh, it's probably a very playable position, but I'm not really that used to those structures. Bishop d7 is a good move, probably. Preparing moves like rook to c8. b5 is completely playable, looking for bishop b7. If a4, we can probably push b5. And b5 also takes away the a4 square for his knight to try and get into c5. These are some of the difficult positions you get when you get into these very symmetrical middle games. We need to start trying to come up with ideas. Again, queen b6 I don't like, knight to a4, which defends b2, attacks my queen, targets c5. So b5 looks like a good move. You've always got to check to see if white can play e4. If he can, it's not that big a deal. Like, I mean, it, it might be a big deal, but it isn't necessarily a big deal just because he can play it. But you should keep an eye out for it because it could be a big deal. It's just one of those moves that you're always having to keep an eye on. If he plays a move like knight to d2, then we go, ah, maybe he's preparing e4 because he's opening up a lot of support for that square, right? Although if he goes knight to d2, we might be able to go knight to a5 and try and expose this bishop, like I previously mentioned. And if the bishop drops back to e3, then he can no longer play e4 because his bishop will be blocking it. He could sacrifice, I mean sacrifice the bishop, give up the bishop for the knight and go e4 anyway. But I feel like that favors us because we'll be able to ruin his structure. Something to keep in mind anyway. So I don't mind this position. I think if I can get bishop b7 in, that would be very nice. Because it will give support to any e4 break he tries to make. Or if I put a knight on e4 myself. Which I've been mentioning for quite a few moves. Again, this is a possibility. And if he takes takes, his knight gets booted, we win this pawn. But I don't like... This potentially opening up against my rook. He might be preparing a4 here, but we can just snap this pawn with an attack on the knight if we take with the bishop. So, queen b6 is a move that's not bad. Just dying up the d4 pawn. And if e3 is played, this bishop is looking kind of exposed because it's got no retreat. But I think that's a bit premature. I think bishop b7 and like rook to c8. Or maybe bishop b7, queen b6, rook fc8. Good ideas. Makes a lot of sense. Again, a4. We can just take this with an attack on the knight. No worries at all. I'm always looking at knight e4, by the way. Like I said, one of those moves that you just always have to check just in case. I'm always checking it. Because if I can somehow force the knight to take and then take, then d4 will be exposed when this knight is kicked off of the defense, like I mentioned. Yeah, I don't mind this position at all. I mean, it's nothing special. It's an, it's an exchange slav, arguably the most boring opening in chess. So you're not expecting massive things from it. Okay, is he preparing e4? Maybe. I think rook c8 makes a lot of sense in this position. Just lining up with the undefended knight. Also providing support to the knight, so if he takes, I probably want to take with the rook rather than the bishop, because the bishop's no good on c6. It's just more of a target. It's going to have to drop back anyway, because it's got no forward movement, obviously. So it's blocked in by the pawns. So I like the move rook c8. I'm not going to spend too long on this. This is um, a bit novel for the rating climb, by the way. I'm not in insane time trouble. This is mad. Now, this could change. But as of now, 
we're in an all right position. We're playing well. Like I said, it's an exchange Slav. Notoriously boring. But that doesn't mean the game is a draw. Like, people might play the exchange Slav as white to get a draw. But they still have to play. They've still got to play moves. That might be why my opponent chose to exchange the pawns. Because he thought, ah, my opponent's a fair bit higher rated. Let's try and get a bit of a drawish position. Because there's no real imbalances in the position. Which is what makes it drawish. But drawish is very different to drawn. Queen b6 is a move I want to play. Connecting the rooks. Um, if he takes, and I can take back with the rook. And then potentially double up on the c file. I also want to target this d4 pawn. And again, after e3, I might be able to expose this bishop somehow. Knight h5 won't be playable just yet because the queen controls that square, but worth keeping in mind. We can also potentially prepare ideas like a5. Not right now. Although, something like this. And then a3 being exposed does look nice. Queen b6 makes a lot of sense. Knight to d7 isn't playable because my knight covers that square, which would fork my queen and rook. Is this knight exposed? If we play like queen to b6, bishop to g5, is that a problem? We can't really take because after pawn takes, our knight's under attack, and if the knight moves, the bishop hangs, and our knight can't move to a square that defends the bishop. So just want to check queen b6 bishop to g5 we can probably just go oh no we can't really go h6 because takes takes knight d7 so queen b6 bishop to g5 maybe just rook c7 controlling both of these squares that should be fine. And this, this pawn is still under attack. So that's good. We might be able to just take with the queen actually. Although then we have knight c6. Queen is uh, no longer defended. And after queen takes queen into mezzo, knight takes c7 check. King moves, then he takes back the queen. And then he's up two pieces. <laughs> so that would be a big blunder. Big blunder. Of course, after bishop g5, we could also play rook f to d8. But like I said, I kind of want to double up on the c file. Because that's the only open file, right? So rook c7 makes a bit more sense to me. Although, if bishop g5, rook c7, he might just return to f4 and line up the bishop with the rook. In that case... Then we can probably just take the knight though. And if bishop takes, play like rook c4, target this, prepare to double. And if he takes back with the pawn, then we can just move this knight to like d7 to attack this. We're still preparing to double up. This diagonal is now cut off by the pawn. And he's got double pawns. I mean, the double pawns aren't that big a deal because they're controlling important central squares. But okay. Those are just a couple lines that we had to calculate in order to make sure that we're good. But I think we are good. I think we're good. By the way, if you've made it this far in the video and you are enjoying it and finding it educational and you're not subscribed yet, I'd really appreciate if you could subscribe so you could stay updated with the channel. I'm releasing videos every single day, try and educate you guys and help you improve at chess. And for those of you who are subscribed, please drop a like and comment and let me know what you'd like to see more of in the future. Like the things that I'm doing well for you guys, because like I said, it's all about trying to educate you and the things that I could improve on because I'm more than open to constructive, constructive criticism. Obviously, don't just insult me because I mean, I can't stop you from insulting me, but that doesn't really help anybody <laughs> involved since you're already so far in the video. Um, E3. I feel like I had a plan here. Do I just take? If 
bishop takes knight e7. Attack the bishop. Bishop back. G5. I, that bishop looks really trapped, actually. That bishop's looking very, very trapped. If we go down that particular line. Take. And if pawn takes. Again, the bishop looks very exposed. We can just play. Knight d7. And again, g5 is a move. I'd expect h4 to stop g5. But then we can probably go on the queen side offensive with moves like a5 or rook c4 looking to double up. Taking looks very, very logical. The knight is his most active piece, you know. Let's get it off the board. Now, I could consider dropping my knight into e4. I don't know if I want to open the d-file, though. He might be trying to play e4 himself. We'll have to see, though. We'll have to see. This could be interesting. But I think knight takes knight makes a whole lot of sense. Because that knight was very active, looking at some crucial squares. Um, and our knight on c6 had no future anyway, because completely controlled by his pawns um no forward movement so why not trade off one of our arguably worst pieces for one of his better pieces this knight is a lot better than this knight because we actually have control of squares like e4 you know we control the light squares in the position he controls the dark squares so our dark squared bishop's going to be very important for trying to break apart this queen size structure, which I think is very fragile after a move like a5. Obviously, it's probably defendable, but it just looks very fragile. Because the common saying, like a pawn chain is only as strong as its base, a5 isn't all that strong. It's completely undefended. Now, can we actually access it right now? No, but... Ooh, takes with the pawn, okay. Okay, well, we can drop in like this. But then takes, takes. And you know what I was saying before about this knight being a lot better than this knight? And therefore training it off? I think we'd just be giving him the same option. And again, we have a very, very symmetrical position, which I don't really want to do. So knight d7 pressure on e5 we could bring it to b6 and into the position in the future that is very logical to me are we worried about e4 well we could put just push d4 potentially but then knight d2 i'm not convinced knight d7 e4 if we take then our knight hangs so here, here. There, there. Hmm. I'm not loving it. Not loving it, honestly. So maybe we should go knight e4. Even though I don't really want to. Because e4 looks like a problem. Because our knight will be undefended on d7. Now if we go knight d7, e4, rook, fd8, takes, takes. He's just winning a pawn. And I don't think we really have any compensation. So, okay. Knight e4 looks forced. Even though I don't love this... We are still having ideas of threatening this bishop. Although, if we go g5 too early, then queen g4, whoops, this pawn is pinned, and it's attacked twice. And if we defend it with a move like h6, then h4, and we are getting slaughtered. But even if we can't trap the bishop, it's still not doing anything. If h4 may be intending a move like bishop g5 to trade bishops off, we can always go h6 to stop that. And again... If he can't push e4, then his bishop's just kind of stuck. So, again, completely symmetrical position. But I feel like my bishops are better than his bishops. 
This bishop's targeting this weak pawn chain. This bishop is defending very well. Could even go to d5 in the future to secure, like, to stop my opponent using the d file. And look this direction, which could be useful. And again, keep his bishop out of the game. He might end up rerouting his bishop via f1. But this pawn is a problem for him, I feel like. Because it means he can't push this pawn to get his bishop back into the game. If f3 is played, it, it might even be the best idea to open the f-file, open this bishop up, potentially trade this bishop off, and play e4 in the future. It will give him doubled isolated pawns. And to be honest, we could just sack the pawn and let him take us, so that he keeps the same problems of this bishop, and if he takes, he's just got tripled isolated pawns which are just very vulnerable anyway. So that's also a possibility. If he goes for a move like f3, we could just play a5 and go, yo, I don't care about the king's side. I want to attack your weak pawn chain. And if we can win these two pawns for the price of one pawn and get this going, we've got some good winning chances. Okay, I think he was worried about g5. He is threatening this. So, it's also maybe trying bishop g5 here to trade off bishops. Okay, we could go rook f to d8. Hmm. But then bishop g5 and we're forced to trade. Then his queen gets very active. So we could go rook f to e8. Of course, if he takes us, we just take. Uh, rook f e8 and if bishop g5, bishop f8. Again, arguing this bishop's out the game and g7 is defended. So these ideas aren't scary. Rook e8, bishop h6, bishop f8. I'm just a little bit concerned about, am I? Rook e8, bishop g5, bishop f8, h4, h5, h6. We could always just move the king to h8 and play h6 ourselves. Don't know if I love this. We do have the option of trading rooks. Although actually, oh no, then we're good. That line's fine. Takes, takes, here. Do we want to trade all the rooks? I don't think we do. Or do we? I'm leaning more towards trading the rooks. I don't know why. No. No, let's keep a pair on. Let's keep a pair on. I think that should improve the winning chances if we do. I'm draining a lot of time right now, though. Okay, let's go rook e8. Let's go rook f to e8, giving us the f8 square for the bishop. And making sure bishop g5 doesn't come with a pin on a rook on d8. I would have preferred to put the rook on d8 because open file, but yeah, I don't want to because I want to play bishop to f8. Because like I said, I think our bishop's better than his bishop. And again, in the case of f3, we can just let him take us. And if he goes f4, cutting his bishop's connection off to e3, then we can take on e3 with check and win a rook in the current configuration. And a5 is my idea. He might have good kingside attacking chances, but I kind of don't believe in them. We could play g6, but then I'm worried about this. So I think bishop f8 is more logical. Ooh, I just realized this pawn is going to hang. I missed that. That's not good. That's not a good miss. 
Although he can't take it immediately. He can't take it immediately because uh, his bishop will hang at the end of it. But I fully just missed that. I don't know why, because when the queen went to g4, I noticed it was lining itself up with the pawn. So I'm not sure why, I'm not sure why I missed that, but I did. Hmm. It does look very dangerous on the king's side, admittedly. But I don't think it actually is. King h8 will force the bishop to move. But the thing is, the bishop being on h6 is forcing this queen to stay on the g-file. Because otherwise it's going to hang. So if anything, our bishop is tying down two of his pieces by just defending g7. We always have this in our back pocket if we need. Like I said, e4 is not takeable currently. If he goes bishop to g5, then this is takeable. Have I missed something? What? Is this not hanging? I've got to trust... I mean, he has no attackers. He only has a queen, but a queen can't do that much by herself, even if our pawn structure is a bit ruined. I think that's just a straight-up blunder, which is unfortunate for my opponent, because he's played that position very well, to be fair to him. I swear, like, when I play really well in some of these episodes recently, I end up doing something stupid later in the game. And then when I play poorly, I my opponents end up doing something stupid later in the game. Maybe it's genuinely fatigue. I don't know. It might actually just be that. But the game isn't over, so let's not get ahead of ourselves. But it's not looking good for my opponent. He might try to go f4 and f5. But we, I think we'd probably trade a pair of rooks if he goes f4. It's difficult to trade queens, though. Yeah, because f5 is kind of a problem. This might be a good move. Yeah, it would sacrifice a pawn, but then we take here. And then I think we're good. And his queen can't you can't really attack us very well. We're also potentially going to double up. That looks really nice. Rook c4 looks good. I like that move. Because the problem is, if we give him an... Like, say we play rook to d8 for whatever reason here. F5, and I'm actually a bit worried. I mean, if we take, then our queen can get back into the defense at some point, sure. We're probably still winning, but white gets a lot of chances. And as we've seen in previous episodes, just because a position is objectively winning, that isn't necessarily mean all that much okay 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 so queen f3 potentially coming into g4 keeps an eye on e3 good move mm, if we take and then rook takes this is a nice move potentially but then queen g4 check king to h8 We can't play f5. Oh, and then we're actually pinning the pawn to his queen, though. Regardless of whether my rook or queen ends up on c4. So that's nice. We do take our eyes off at this, but... I'm going to make this move. Oh my god, I just blundered. I just blundered queen takes c6. What am I doing? Queen takes c6. Rook takes c6. Rook takes c6. What is wrong with me? I keep doing this. 
Like, what? Why? Oh my god. I just keep on making stupid moves. That's so... It almost feels like it's intentional at this point. Some of these moves are just so horrific. It feels like I'm like intentionally trying to prolong this series, but I'm really not. I'm just playing horrible moves so often. Now it's um <laughs> going to be trying to salvage a draw. Oh my god. Up a piece. Up a piece. Dude. Again, uh, maybe I just put that down to fatigue. Like, maybe I'm literally just tired as the game goes on and I just mess up as a result of it. I don't know. <sighs> so unnecessary to make a mistake like that. I don't have a choice but to push, and now my bishop's kind of out of the game. Maybe we have drawing chances, but I, I don't like my odds. I really don't. The reason that I went for this um, whole A5 takes and push sort of idea was because if this gets into too simple of an endgame, it's going to be an easy win for him. I was trying to do this, but he just says rook here. Can't push either because he just takes. I feel like I need to get my king into the game. I don't think I have a choice. Fortunately, we do control c1. I don't want to go to e7 because um, rook c7 check followed by a7 or taking on f7 depending on where my king goes. So bad. Although if we go king d7 and rook d6 we could go to c7 and again this isn't a move because our bishop controls that. So maybe we can hold on. thing is, if his king just gets over here, I feel like we've lost. Is that his idea? And then like this. I don't like the look of that. Here opening this up, wait, here, 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 there, takes there, 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 I feel like we need to go for this variation, because if white gets too much time, to configure his pieces, this is going to be game over. I hope I'm not blundering something as stupid as queen to c6. I can't believe that. Genuinely can't. Such a horrific move. <sighs> it was so easy. So easy. At least we're creating some counterplay now, now though. Like I said, with this whole line. Yeah, I, th I think we have to go B3. Might still be losing, but I don't think we have a choice. I think it's our best bet. We 
can salvage a draw from this, this will be an absolute miracle. Absolute miracle. Ah. Uh, oh no, I missed that. Because I just assumed it was under control. No. No, that's game. That's game. I only have one square. And then B3 falls with check and I lose the bishop. Oh, my days. So bad. Well, I mean, we'll just check to make sure he plays the move. Um, just in case he plans on doing something stupid, potentially. Which, you know, there's always a possibility. Yeah, I think he'd be very... very it'd be very impressive if he managed to lose this somehow. Yeah, I just missed this move because in my head, b6 was defended. Um, could I have done anything else in this position? Problem is, rook d7 check is coming in. f7 is going to fall. Goes for this. Ah, uh, wants to do this. I don't know why he's chosen to do it this way. Could just want a bishop, but okay. I mean, he's he's still winning though, like completely. If he goes here, I'll resign because that is game over. I mean, it already is, but rugby seven is, yeah, nail in the coffin. I think what I'm going to do, right, because that was such a frustrating game. Obviously, we'll go over the game analysis. I think what I'm going to do is um, release this video on the, like, as a second video on the same day. And then record again to release tomorrow, for like tomorrow's daily video. Because I, I, I feel like I'm failing you guys by playing really nice games and then messing it up horribly for no reason. And I, like I said, I know the point is to educate, but I do feel quite bad about like, maybe it's just my ego that's hurt. Maybe it doesn't change the actual quality of the video for you. Uh, so please, you know, let me know whether it matters whether I win or lose, but I feel like it's less satisfying to watch if I'm playing all the right ideas and everything and then mess it up for no reason. So yeah, I think I might just release this later on today as a bit of bonus content almost. And then uh, record, like, record again, basically straight afterwards to uh, try and redeem myself. But yeah, let's get into the game analysis. Because honestly, honestly, I think other than that one move, I think it's probably a pretty perfect game, you know. I honestly do. So let's get into the analysis. Well, an incredibly frustrating finish to the game. A fairly accurate game where, I mean, I obviously was completely winning when I went up a piece. Uh, game review uh, accuracies, 88.6% um, to my opponent and 85.8% to me. It's a very, um, I mean, I want to say high level game, but to be fair, it's an exchange slav. Like, uh, it's not that big a deal. So, yeah, we have... Um, I mean, it's called the Karo Khan defensive system, but it's essentially a Slav because I'm playing against c4. Taking kind of just like signifies a fairly equal game. Uh, knight 2, c6. I don't think that d4 is playable here. Uh, queen a4 check. Knight c6. Knight b5. And I can't defend this pawn again. So yeah. Uh, if you're wondering, d4 was not playable. I didn't calculate this line, I just felt like it would be a massive overreach, which is why I didn't play it. 
So d4, knight f6, bishop f4. Uh, this is a move, but for the reasons that I mentioned to do with like queen b3 attacking this pawn, maybe potential knight b5, I didn't do it. If knight b5 here, maybe queen a5 check. And I'm good because if queen to d2, then the knight hangs. If bishop to d2, if I take the knight, then there is e4. Although I'm still probably quite good in this position because white's pawn structure is a bit weird. And I have moves like knight to e4, but I thought it was easier to play a6. And this is a fine move. Um, a3 was a bit odd. A bishop f5 is a perfectly good move here again, but I chose e6 because I wanted to be solid. Maybe it was a bit less active than I should have gone for, though. g3. Again, strange move. Uh, bishop e7. I didn't go bishop to d6 because of the reasons I explained during the game with, like, knight to e5. Although apparent... Oh, I'm just winning the pawn. Ah, here I'm just winning the pawn, yeah. White well, can't defend. Ah, I kind of missed that. So his best move was to probably take. I mean, this is fine for white. Sorry, black. But it's also fine for white. Um, I think I kind of prefer the way I played, though, just to keep more pieces on the board, even if my logic was a bit incorrect. Uh, bishop g2, castles, castles b5. I like the move b5. Because, yeah, I could have played bishop b7, but I'd rather put the bishop on b7 to uh, have control over e4, which came in useful later in the game, right? b4, bishop b7, knight e5. Here, the game starts to swing my way a bit after rook to c8. Uh, if he were to take me, I was going to take back with the rook to i up the knight, and after I move like rook to c1. I can probably play moves like queen b6, rook c4, followed by rook f to c8. It's all very nice. Uh, I also have great control over the e4 square. It's a very easy position to play with black. I can throw in h6 potentially to stop bishop g5 and give my king an escape square in the future. It's nice. Queen b6, e3. And knight takes e5 is the only move here to maintain the advantage for black. Because... Like I said, d7 is a bit weak looking. e3 was an odd move. I was expecting bishop g5, which is the computer's favourite move. And yeah, rook c7 is perfectly fine. Rook f to e8 is also fine. I guess because if rook f e8 takes takes here, I can go queen... Ah, queen takes d4. And this knight can no longer be taken. And my queen protects the bishop. That makes sense. So e3... I take, d takes. If bishop takes, then I was planning on knight d7. And this bishop's kind of looking a bit vulnerable. Um, if you were to retreat the bishop, I have this whole a5 plan, and it actually lands in time now. The problem is with the game, I didn't get a chance to play a5. Funnily enough, knight d7 is best here, but I was very worried about e4. d4, knight e2. I did see this idea of rook takes c1, trying to deflect one of these pieces. Ah, the reason I rejected it was because of bishop takes, but that hangs e5, and that's good for me. I missed that line. Okay, and then if the queen takes, which looks more natural, then I have d3. And yeah, this is just good for me. Missed that line, that's frustrating. I mean, the reason I missed it was because I thought after bishop takes, this pawn is going to fall. I miss, I missed the fact that I can take this pawn. So, got to be fully aware of everything going on in the board. But, knight 4 is fine. D takes is a mistake. It's better to take here first. What? There, there. Bishop back. What's wrong with this? Queen g4 is just a good move, apparently. But we found the best move. The only move to keep the advantage for black. Rook f to e8. 
See, my problem was, if I were to play a move like king h8 here, then bishop g5, this bishop's forced off the board, and his queen's getting kind of active. I'm not really a big fan of this. So I was happy with rook f8, and after bishop h6, we go bishop f8. Black is better. Taking here is obviously a massive blunder for the reasons I explained. If f3 was played, if I take... Oh, I think I'm actually very good here, because he can't take with the bishop. Well, okay, his queen can't end up there, because then the bishop will hang. Here, he's and he can't take with uh, the rook or anything, because not only can I take, but his rook hangs. So rook c8, rook c8, bishop f3, bishop f3, rook f3, rook c3, and I guess my king side is just defended, and um, these are some weak-looking pawns. Okay, well, I knew f3 wouldn't be a great idea anyway, and even if I don't take it, because um, I don't have to take it, if he takes me ever, then the pawns are very, very ugly regardless. Push takes e4 is obviously a blunder, because then we win the bishop. f4, rook c4 is a good move. My plan was here, here, and he can't really take, because then I take like this. So then we have this pawn going through. Maybe this is a bit concerning, but I feel like I was just getting scared of ghosts here, to be honest, because I just have queen g6, and, like, I'm good. There's no worries. Bishop g7. Yeah, it's got concerned over nothing. I feel like this is happening a lot to me. Queen f3, and I just lose the game on the spot. Unnecessary. I could just play rook e8. I could play queen c7. Rook d8 is fine. I'm sure bishop g7 is fine. Basically everything is winning. Apart from what I did. So frustrating, honestly. And um, the thing is, if this goes the way that I was intending it to go, easy cleanup. So I'm just up a piece and his attacking threat's gone. But yeah, I just somehow missed this. I try my best to create counterplay. Um... But yeah, there really is nothing. He he played quite a nice plan of lifting the rook over like this. Rook d6, king c7, rook b d3, b3. Here, like I said, I just missed this move. Let's just imagine for a second that I do actually occupy this square like this. I mean, maybe I'm okay, but like, still not good can just take here. B2 isn't concerning for him anyway. So yeah, I'm, I'm completely lost regardless, but I thought it was my best chance. Rook C3 check, I'm completely losing. I don't know why he didn't just take like this, because he's just winning the bishop, but he decided to do it this way for uh, whatever reason. I guess he just wanted to trade the rooks off just for safety, because this is completely winning anyway. Rook p7, I have no moves, he has no targets, I have no uh, dangerous pawns or anything, so yeah, I guess I can't really criticise him since he did beat me, but yeah, like I said, very frustrating, and I think I'm just going to release this as a bit of a bonus video, just because I'm so frustrated with it, uh, I don't want to like do it as the main video of the day, because... Again, I feel like I've just kind of let people down by throwing the game away for no reason. So, if that's not the case, then please do let me know. But, like, it's got to be kind of annoying, surely. Like, to be playing very well all game, and they're just throwing it away at the end. for Just because of one stupid move. But, yeah. Regardless, uh, I hope it was educational, at the very least. And maybe you just enjoy watching me blunder and watching me suffer. In which case, this will be a great video for you guys. But yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.